Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to a new Cinema 4D tutorial. So uh, today we're going to be uh, doing something really interesting. Um, the last three tutorials I uploaded was uh, how to make a low poly car, a low poly truck, and uh, a low poly house or building, whatever, in Cinema 4D. So uh, with that, we're going to uh, merge all these elements and create a nice infinity road scene in Cinema 4D. Uh, the links are in the description as well are on the screen if you guys want to check it out So please check that out and then you can go ahead with this tutorial So um, a lot of cool things we'll be doing. I don't know if there's gonna be a one-part tutorial or a two-part tutorial But let's just see what happens. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is want to go and change my render settings So I'll change to 1280 by 720 and um, uh, We're gonna be basically creating a road so uh, let me just show you what we're going to be creating and then we can uh, go ahead with the tutorial. So that is what we're going to be creating. So let's create the light pole. And to create the light pole, we're just going to go and we're going to grab a cylinder. So I'm just going to go to my display and choose Gurao Shading Lines. And I'm going to set the radius of this to 2 and the height of this uh, will remain the same. And uh, we just want to go and let's press S to center it to the uh, screen size. And I'm just going to go to the Y and I'm going to set that to 100 which uh, flats, flats it on the base here. Okay. Uh, and then we want, we want to do is actually, you know, let's just change it to ground shading and we want to duplicate the cylinder. Uh, we want to set the uh, radius of this to 40, sorry, the height of this to 40. And we want to set the orientation to plus X and you want to move it up. So uh, let's see, uh, let's go here and probably somewhere around 195. You want to set that right there. Then you want to go to caps and check on filling and we want to set the radius to 0.5. Uh, I think I'm just going to go and change the radius of this to 1 because I think 2 is too much. Uh, so let's duplicate the cylinder again and we have a copy. And we want to set the radius of this to 2 and uh, the height to 3. And we want to move it out to the side. Actually, let me set the radius to 1.5 and the height to 2. And uh, let's go and just put it out here in the caps. Uh, 3.5 will do good. will be okay. So probably around uh, 20 on the X. Uh, 20 is, uh, I think 20 is too much. Let's set that to 19 probably. Let's see how that goes. OK, so that's perfect. So let me just uh, copy paste the cylinder. And we want to set the X in the coordinates here to minus 19. So that gives us a copy on uh, the other side, as you can see. Here. Uh, I think I'm just going to go to the cylinder and uh, reduce down the radius of this to say something like 0 0.2. That looks OK, uh, next, uh, let's just go take this cylinder, the main one we have. Let's just make a copy of that. And we're going to go to the object and uh, set the height of that to uh, just probably a small number, like 50. And we're going to go to caps and change this to 0 0.5. And uh, we want to go and drag this dude up. OK, so uh, object, let's just set that to 20. Caps, 0 0.5. And I'm going to set the radius of this to 1.5. And uh, we just want uh, it uh, to be protruding out. So say probably around the 192, like that. So we have uh, this pillar protrusion. We can actually take the cylinder and uh, give it a very small radius of say 10.3. Uh, set this 0.1, that looks good. And uh, let's make a copy of uh, this main cylinder again, so Control C, Control V, and I'm going to set the height of this to 50. I'm going to set the radius to 3.5, and go to the caps and uh, give it a radius of 0 0.3. And now uh, we see it is like that. So let's just drag this down and put it on the base. So we're going to set the Y of this to 25, so it uh, snaps to the ground, as you can see here. And let's press S. Okay, let's uh, just select all this, press S, and there we go. We have a nice uh, light. So let's just uh, select all this, press Alt G, and we can call this a pole. 
Okay, so now since we are done with the post, we can go ahead and uh, import our car, truck, houses. Uh, yeah, so let me just import that and I'll be back in a second. Okay, uh, so here I am, uh, and I imported everything. So let's just go and organize uh, this uh, this thing. So we don't want the car now for uh, for at the moment, and uh, we need to take uh, these uh, houses, and we're gonna go into the front view, and we're gonna make sure that these are touching the base. Okay. Okay. Uh, like that. And then let's go back to perspective view. Uh, so then we have something that looks like this, something cool. Uh, and then we can uh, take our pole and we can drag that out. So let's say around uh, minus 200. Let's turn on uh, our shading lines and see what we got here. Okay, this is uh, pretty cool. So now let me just quickly rent, I mean, uh, texture this thing because uh, it's looking pretty uh, bland. So uh, for the pole, uh, we're going to be using two colors. We're going to be using uh, this uh, black and this gray. So this black is around 28%, 28 uh, gray, and uh, this one is 67 gray. So we just go into the pole and uh, let's choose grow shading. And uh, we want to choose, uh, let's see, we want to select this part of the pole and this part of the pole, so these two. And we're just going to drop in the lighter gray. And for the rest of it, let's just drop in the darker gray. Uh, I think I'm just actually going to go and reduce that because uh, this one, let's see, uh, this one is a 67 and this one is 93. Okay, so let's just put this one down to lighten this. Okay, and uh, let's just texture the houses real quick. Okay, so let's uh, go to house one. Um, we want a white color on uh, this part. This one, uh, the poles the side window panes the base and we want to yellow the, everything else so yellow yellow and yellow now let's go here so we want to add a blue tint to this and uh, everything else is white so let's just whiten it okay and uh, here on the red we want to just drop in uh, red here uh, white here and uh, probably a yellow here or something like that. Okay, orange. Yeah, that's looking good. I like it. Let's add this orange. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, uh, so now we have our uh, scenery set over here. Now we want to go and create uh, the road or the base. So let's grab a new cube. So I'm going to set the X size to 1100, the Y size to 30, and uh, the Z size to 1100 again. Uh, so we want to go back to our front view and we want to go and bring this down so we want to set this to probably minus 14 and uh, okay and then we want to go into our top view by pressing F2 and we're gonna get this cube and we want to move it out like that so probably a minus 450 let's go back for perspective view Okay, so but we see there's a lot of space here. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab uh, all these. Uh, we're going to press Alt G, group them into a null, and uh, let's go into our front view so we have a better look. I'm just going to press T and uh, scale the whole thing. So uh, something like that, and we can move this up to the side and we can push it up. So. Let's set the whole now. Push it up, and uh, we can take these things and uh, pop it back out. We can go back to perspective, and there we go. We have something nice. Uh, we can select all these things again and drag it out in the front, so we have a little bit of space here in the back. Okay, uh, that looks amazing. Okay, so then let's uh, unhide our uh, cars over here, and uh, it's hidden. So we are going to drag this out, okay? Okay, uh, now what we want to do is, uh, oops, sorry. 
uh, you want to go and uh, uh, choose the display garage shading lines um, and uh, we want to select this cube and we want to set the segments on the Z to 6 and then we want to hit and make it editable and once we do that we want to select the edge mode we want to press UL to get the loop selection you want to select this loop and we want to drag it out over here so to say minus 525 let's press UL we want to select this one and uh, we want to push it out or let's actually uh, come here and uh, we can push this guy in let's actually go into our let's see our uh, right view yes that looks good and we want this distance to be almost the same so press ul so we select this one and this one by holding shift and then we want to drag it out here into the middle and uh, you want to press ul you want to select this edge and you want to move it in okay press ul again and select these two and uh, we want to drag this in right here so right outside the pole so we go back to a perspective view we have something that looks like this and uh, we can actually take uh, these two and move the little bit oops move these out a little bit to the center so the distance between these two is the same Okay, and uh, I'm pretty happy with that result. A bit more. Okay, so uh, once uh, this is done, sorry for the buzz of my phone, I'm going to go into my uh, polygon selection and I'm pressing UL and we're going to select, oops, actually, let's just select uh, these edges that we just created. And as you can see, since I'm not able to select that edge, I can go by radius settings over here and I'm going to set that down to 3 and that will reduce my radius selection segments. So I'm going to, so, so, then, so now I can hold down shift and uh, select these things. And I'm going to set this back to 10 because I want it to be default and I'm going to press D on the keyboard to get the extrude or right click and choose extrude. And I'm going to set the offset to 15 which um, pops it out like that and now we have a good looking uh, road. Okay, so now let's texture this thing really fast. So we have this uh, yellow over here. So we're going to take the yellow and uh, with these three polygons selected, I am going to go and uh, select a few more. So uh, I'm going to go into my polygon selection mode over here. And uh, we're going to actually, uh, let's uh, set the radius of, let's press UL to get a loop selection. Why isn't UL working? Oh, sorry. Okay, we're going to press UL and uh, okay, so we can select this loop, this loop, holding down shift and this loop, and so that selects uh, all these parts. And we're going to drop in this yellow color. So this yellow has a value of 255, 195, and zero. And uh, I am going to now select this polygon and drop in this white and let's make it a pure white yeah it is a pure white and then uh, we can just take a uh, black color like let's let's make a completely black color you know uncheck the specular completely black color and we can take this and drop it on the whole cube and we can move this in the front and boom there we go we have our texturing done okay now uh, let's take the car one let, let me just uh, call it truck and car so this is going to be truck this is going to be car okay so uh you want to go oops i'm going to shrink this down pretty much like that let's go into our front view and we just want to place it on the floor okay Okay, that is looking good and decent and we can take the truck and I'm going to go to the rotation and I'm going to change the uh, P rotation to 180. Oops. Let's select the polygon mode, sorry, the model mode and P, you want to set that to 180. What? Oh, I'm going to select the truck 
and the age 180 okay there we go and then let's uh, shrink this also down okay and uh, we can go into our top view and uh, we can move this on the side of the road and center it up and we can go into our front view and we can just move this thing up okay and we can shrink it down pretty much more and down okay if you guys are having any queries or doubts please uh, feel free to drop in a comment and uh, we can you know do something about it and I'll reply back okay anyways uh, so this is uh, what we have okay now let's just go and change the number of frames to 150 because it's going to be a five second animation and I'm going to hide the truck for now and I'm just going to go to this car over here now we're going to give some uh, bounce effect to this so how do we do that so on frame zero I'm going to go to the car and I'm going to choose this cube that's over here and I'm just going to put a keyframe on the Y position and I'm going to go to 10 frames I'm going to set this to 4 and I'm going to move this back to 20 and I'm going to set this to 0 and I'm going to go to 30 and I'm going to set this to minus 4 okay and uh, then what we are going to do is we're going to go select all these keyframes we're going to copy it by pressing ctrl C and then we're going to go to frame 40 and we want to paste it so right click okay looks like I didn't copy so right click copy right click paste in let's paste it oh my god why isn't it working so okay, so let's just go do one thing let's go right click and choose show tracks and that gives us the timeline and we can select all these frames you can copy it and let's go to frame 40 and paste it oh my god why isn't it copying right click copy paste okay that's not working uh, let's see copy paste ah oh, there it is okay so now let's go back to frame 80 and right click paste again and now frame 120 and right click paste oops paste okay there we go perfect so now let's just see what we got so we have this nice up and down movement like you know the car is bouncing okay now what we can do is uh, we can go right click and choose show at curves and now we have this uh, spline movement like ease in and ease out so what we're going to do is going to select all and you click on this button which choose linear and or right click and choose linear and now we have a more crisp animation so uh, okay now that's your preference but I don't like it to be like that so I'm just going to control Z that so that we have now a smooth animation like that okay so now we're done with the bouncing car so now let's turn back the truck on and uh, we want to uh, get into the animation part so uh, with the truck selected I'm going to go to MoGraph and right click sorry hold alt and I want to click on cloner and so that creates the cloner right to where the truck is and uh, I'm going to go to the cloner and under the object I'm going to set the count to 3 uh, set the Y to 0 and the X to say probably 3200 so now we have three trucks as you can see here and I'm just going to go to the uh, coordinates of the truck and I'm going to move this out to say uh, minus 1000. Minus 1000. And I'm going to hit a stopwatch on frame 0. And then I'm going to go to 150 frames. And I'm going to move this way front. So we have something, let's say 7200. Uh, let's set this to 7300. And hit a sharp stopwatch. And then we're going to go select this keyframe and choose the interpolation to linear. And we're going to select this keyframe and choose the interpolation to linear. And 
now we see that we have this kind of an animation. Pretty simple. Okay, uh, now uh, what we actually want to do is let's go to a frame like that and uh, I think this uh, truck is uh, pretty big so what we can do is we can take the truck and hit T and scale it down okay and let's go back to our front view and we can move this thing down back to our right view and we can move this oops Okay, let's control Z that actually. Okay, we want to take the cloner itself and move the cloner down and we want to move this thing a little bit on the right side like that. And uh, I'm going to take this car, uh, I'm going to shrink it down further. So let's see. Uh, okay. Press D, shrink a little bit down, not too much. Okay. And let's go back to our front view and we can just bring this down as well and uh, this is right on the center okay and now what we want to do is we want to copy this car by pressing ctrl C ctrl V so I'm just going to name this car blue and I'm going to name this car green so let me just make a copy of a material over here and I'm going to go quickly change the color of this to a nice fluorescent green and uh, we want to go and replace it with the blue color oops yeah and now we can take this green car and we can move it to the side perfect so now we have space for two cars as you can see here okay now let's go and uh, grab a cloner for this so we go to MoGraph right hold down alt and put the cloner and we can go to the object, we can set the count to 9, we can set the Y to 0, and I'm going to set the X value over here to 1200, okay, and uh, I think I'm going to go to this transform, okay, the car green, I'm just going to hit R and I'm going to rotate it, okay, it's not working, so we can go here into the color and we can change the heading, so uh, let's set this to 180 degrees so it is facing the opposite side of the car and now we have a bunch of cars so let's take the cloner and uh, i think i'm going to go uh, for the easiness i'm going to set this to minus 1200 which puts everything behind and now we can uh, move this back like that okay and uh, on frame zero we want to set a keyframe so let's set this to say something like uh, minus 700 Let's set it to 7, 750. Okay, we're gonna hit our stopwatch and we want to go to frame 150 and we're gonna drag that all the way. So, probably around uh, set this to say like uh, 10,000. Let's try 11,000. Or we can set this to uh, 10,500. Uh, Yeah, that looks good. And now let's uh, just zoom back and see what we got. Okay, uh, we need to make sure that these keyframes interpolation is linear. And now we have more of a crisp animation. Yeah, that look, that that's looking brilliant. Okay. Now, uh, as you can see here, all these cars are in green color, which is kind of uh, odd. So, how do we fix that? Pretty simple. We're gonna go and uh, do make a copy. What is this cube? Okay, um, I'm just gonna call this road. So, I'm gonna make a copy of this car green twice, and I'm gonna call this uh, car red, and I'm gonna call this car uh, let's say blue again and now we're gonna go and take this red material and drop it here on the green 
and uh, this blue one we're gonna go and choose this blue color so now if you can see we have a randomization of the color of the cars pretty cool Okay, uh, so let's now go to this cloner. With this cloner selector, we're going to go to MoGraph Effector and choose a Plane Effector. Now, as you can see, the Plane Effector has default, uh, defaultly uh, changed the Y um, value to 100. So what we're going to do is not change the Y, the position. We're going to choose the scale. And we're going to set Uniform Scale and set the scale to minus 1. Now, everything disappears, but don't worry. I'm going to go to the fall off and I'm going to choose a uh, box and I'm going to set the size of this to 2000. I'm going to set the fall off to 6. Let's set this to 5. Uh, and I'm going to set the size X, sorry, Y to 500 and Z to 500. Okay, that is a pretty big fall off. And uh, we are going to go and move this here into the center. So let's go into our top view, and uh, this is the middle part, and we're going to place it right in the middle of the road. And we're going to push it out completely over here. Okay. So now, uh, if we move further, we see that as soon as the cars I just hide this and choose display graph shading. So as you move, we can see that they kind of disappear. Okay, and if you want to go a little slow, you can see frame by frame what happens. And uh, you guys can decide where you want to put it for the factor. So go to the coordinates and move this up a little bit, something like that, and then. Boom. Okay. So uh, we're gonna go and select. Okay. So this we're gonna call it as. Uh, we're gonna call this uh, many cars, and uh, we're gonna call this uh, many trucks. And uh, in the effectors tabs of many trucks, we're gonna take the same plane effector and drop that in. So now what happens is everything disappears. Okay. So that's how we achieve this cool animation. Pretty cool, isn't it? But we can see the cars that are coming over here. So it's pretty simple. We just want to go and duplicate this plane effector. And we want to make sure that this plane effector is down here in many cars and also here in many trucks. And let's just uh, uncheck this plane effector. And we are going to take this plane effector, go to the fall off. Okay, let's actually move it first. Okay, so uh, let's actually do it a better way. So we're just going to go to the x axis and set a negative value and drop that on. Now let's hide it and see what we have. So if I hit play, we can see the cars pop on. I mean, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? So once we're done with the cars animation, we can go ahead and uh, we can copy this many cars by pressing Control C, Control V, and we can name this many uh, poles. And what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, delete all the things that are inside. We can just take the pole and we can drop that into the cloner. Okay. And now uh, we see we have a little problem. So. Uh, okay, looks like it's not working. So uh, let's just uh, the pole out. Let me pull. Okay, so let's uh, get a new color. So with the pole selected, I'm going to go to MoGraph and I'm going to hit Alt and click, which gives the cloner. And as you can see, it is cloning in the Z in the Y axis. So we are going to go and set the count to uh, let's say 20, and uh, set the Y to zero and the X to 300. Whoops the X to 300. Okay. So this is still minus 300. 
I'll probably set the uh, count. I think I think twenty is a good number. And now uh, we want these poles to be uh, in the animation. So uh, we are going to go to the cloner and uh, let's see. Um, uh, okay, doesn't matter. So we're just gonna go take the cloner and move it right here. And we need to make sure that we have both the effectors affecting the plane. So as you can see here, it kind of uh, diminishes as it goes. Okay, so you want to place the cloner. So let's uh, animate this thing. So let's go to frame zero, and on the cloner, we want to go to the uh, let's see the object, say so the coordinates, and make a stopwatch on X. Go to frame 150, and we're gonna go all the way till you know we kind of cover the whole thing. Okay, and make a stopwatch, and we want to go set the interpolation to linear and interpolate interpolation to linear. Now let's see. Okay, so now uh, there's a small problem which uh, we will have to fix. Now, as you can see here, if I hide the plane effectors, and if I go forward, you can see that the uh, they are shrinking right you know in thin air which is not uh, very uh, nice so how do we do that so uh, we can, i'm going to hide the plane effectors for now and the cloner and we just have this pole so i'm going to go and click on my axis tool and i'm going to take the axis and bring it down okay bring it down and uh, then when we check back everything on we see that uh, it's all gone high so we can go to the cloner and uh, go to the transform and we can bring down the y okay so let's go into our front view and uh, that is looking good and now when i hit play we can see it actually shrinks from the bottom which is amazing so that is now taken care of. And the same happens here as well. So it comes from the bottom. Now the same happens with the car as well. But uh, you can see that it's uh, already down. So I don't think there's any much change. But if you need, please go ahead and make the changes. So now let's uh, go to this cloner. And uh, okay, this is at a linear. So now let's just see, make a quick animation and see what we got. Okay, that is looking fantastic. So now let's uh, start, um, you know, animating the buildings. So what I want to do is I want to make all of these into three separate objects. So to do that, I'm going to go H1. I'm going to select all this, press C, and then right click and choose connect objects plus delete. Bring that out. And uh, I'm going to call this H1. And here in H2, we have a lot of things. So we're going to select all that, hit C on the keyboard. And then we want to choose Select Children. We're going to hit C again. And you're going to right click and choose Select Children. So we can see that the number of elements keep increasing. I'm going to hit C again. And then right click and uh, choose Select Children. And since it's 28, it's remaining the same. So we're going to choose Connect Objects plus Delete. And we're going to call this H2. And uh, then we have H3 over here. So uh, we're going to drop that down. We're going to select all of these objects. I can delete this one. Select all these objects. Hit C. Right click. Choose the select children. So the elements increases to 12. Hit C again. Right click. Uh, select children. And now we can do is connect objects plus delete. And this is going to be H3. Now, as you, now, you, now all this is uh, you know black in color, but if hit Control R and hit Render, you see the color is still evident. So that's not an issue. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to our top view into our front view, and we are going to take the axis points and we're going to move it down here. Select this one, move this axis point right down to the corner. Select this one, 
I know this access point right here. We can go into our top view and make sure it is in the middle. So this one we're going to middle it out and like that. That is perfect. And then what we want to do is we want to go and select all this, press Alt G, grab, put them into a null, and then we're going to go to MoGraph and choose a cloner, and we're going to drag this null inside the cloner. And here in the cloner, we uh, want to set the Y to zero, and this cloner we want to just you know push it in like that and like that. Okay, and uh, we want to go and start moving it on the X. So, you know, something like that. You can give it a little bit more spacing here. Because I want to set this to minus 2000. Let's actually increase it to 4. And if you go back to our perspective view, we can see that we have some place here to put in our text just in case. So uh, uh, so let's go and create our text. So let's go to our front view so we have a better idea. So we're going to go to MoGraph and choose a uh, Mo text. And I'm going to just type in double cube. And I'm going to go choose a simple font. So probably I'm going to be using, uh, I don't know, uh, Let's see, uh, Moon Boran. Okay, let's change it. Uh, Moonshiner. Now, let's choose uh, something pretty simple and nice. Liberator. Okay, we're going to go with liber Liberator. So we take the text and uh, it's only the text. And you want to change the alignment to right because we want the access point to be on the right side and we want to move this out like that and then we can go into our cloner over here and start increasing this value okay so I'm like minus 2100 okay that is brilliant and what we can do is <coughs> uh, let's keep the mo text right over there we don't want to do anything to that. We want to go and give this a depth of say 150 and uh, we can push it out over here and probably put in a purple color on that text. And let's see what happens when we put this cloner inside the null. Okay. So uh, let's see, we want to go and all the text like that, okay? So that is looking good. That is fantastic. And now what we want to do is we want to go and to the Effector tab and drop in the Plane Effector 1 and Plane Effector 2. But as you can see, it quite doesn't work. So I don't know why, but we kind of have to create two more plane factors and you know give the same setting. So I'm gonna go select the cloner, go to MoGraph effector and choose a plane effector. I'm gonna uncheck the position. I'm gonna go to the scale, uniform scale, set this to minus one, and then in the fall I'm gonna choose box, the same settings. So two thousand by five hundred by 500 and I'm set the fall off to 5 and let's just copy paste these positions so copy paste copy paste okay uh, looks like we have to see all this out okay and let's make a copy of this plane effector and we want to make sure that in this cloner, this plane effect of 3 is down. And this we want to move to the positive side. So there we go. OK. But we can still see this this, del this cube. So uh, how are we going to fix that? Uh, let's see. <coughs> let's hide these two for now. 
and let's just take this cloner and I think I'm going to animate the mode text separately so let me just drop that out let me hide this for now and uh, we can take the cloner and make a keyframe here and then we can go to the 150th frame and start moving these okay so now we have another problem so now we can see that these are affecting everything at once so how do we fix that so let's control Z because we don't want to add any keyframes we're going to choose a fracture object sorry a fracture object and we're going to put the fracture object down here put in the cloner there and we're going to set the uh, object mode to explode segments and connect and now if we move the fracture object okay we need to make sure that it is affecting it's being affected over here now let's see if it works okay so we want to remove the effectors from the cloner now let's see okay we just want to do uh, explode segments in that case let, now, let, now let's see okay still having problems in that case what we want to do is uh, make the cloner editable so now we have a bunch of objects we can select each one of them drag that out put it under the fracture we can delete the cloner and now let's see if it works there we go perfect okay but okay so we're going to go to the fracture object and set the transform mode to straight and then let's go to frame zero and then you want to go to the coordinates and hit a keyframe and then you want to move to frame 150 and you want to start moving these things out so probably like that and then make a keyframe again but you can see that the uh, the houses are moving uh, are you know are becoming smaller in the middle so we just want to change that so let's just go to all the objects over here and we want to go into our top view I think that's that's okay so what we want to do is uh, we want to go into the plane effector that's over here and uh, also the plane effector that's over here so because this is the one which is affecting the fracture object and we just want to go to the position over here and we want to set this to a negative 100 so now if we zoom in and uh, we see what's happening we can see that it kind of it starts you know shrinking from you know at the bottom so if we, let's just go back and uh, zoom out and let's have a view so you see it, it pops from the bottom and uh, you know uh, exits from the top now one thing we want to make sure is we want to set these keyframes to linear and uh, let's just play it and see what we get okay so we have this nice animation which is uh, looking brilliant i must say i would love it now one thing we can add on is uh, the text so now we want to go and create a text so i'm going to remove graph and choose a mo text and under the object i'm just going to type in double q and uh, we'll go to the font and choose a simple font so let's try uh, print bold I don't know let's try um, we can I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go with something very simple probably even go for a real black so let's uh, or a Haroni and anything that suits you 
So I'm going to undo my front view and I'm just going to go and take my Mo text and go to Mo graph effector, sorry, hold alt and choose cloner and I'm going to set the count to 4 and I'm going to zero the Y. Now I'm going to uncheck these text objects over here so I can kind of place my Mo text where my cloner wherever I want. So I'm just going to I'm going to shrink down the size of this so to say probably around 170 and then I'm going to set the depth to 150 and if I go into my top view I can just move it up so it is in place take the cloner okay and uh, I'm going to move it to the side so we have nice space over here and then I'm going to go and start increasing the x values okay so we have four on each end and now we want to go and uh, uh, animate this thing so I'm going to go to the cloner and I want to make sure that here in the mo text options in the letters we have plane one and plane two affecting it so now go to the cloner and go to the coordinates and click on the stopwatch and uh, select it and make it linear and go to the last and uh, you're going to move all these out till the end okay so you can see here that i made a gap for the last text and uh, let's go and key that and set this to linear as well now if you can see that it is moving perfectly properly so i'm just going to uncheck check on the plane effectors and i'm going to hit play so there you go. Okay. So now, if you want a little bit more of uh, fun, uh, I'm just going to go and move this up. Okay. We can actually go select the Mo text, and we're going to go to Mo graph effector and choose a delay effector, and uh, that will we can. Uh, Probably set the mode to spring and uh, see yeah you can see that right it's kind of springing but I uh, know that's up to you I'm not going to be using the delay factor I'm just going to be using it like that okay so uh, once we have this animation set we can go and create a nice background and uh, I'm going to go and make a new material so I'm just going to check on the luminance I'm going to choose a gradient. I'm going to choose a type to circular. And here I'm going to choose a nice blue colors. And I'm going to drop it on the background. If I hit Control R, you can see we have this. And uh, okay, we have this unnecessary text object, which I'm going to delete. And uh, we have this material over here, a purple material. And I'm just going to drag it on to the uh, Mo text object. And now we can see we have something like that. OK, so I'm just going to go and go to the render settings and uh, check on anti-aliasing. Set that to best. Go to uh, effect, choose, uh, I don't know, let's try ambient occlusion. And now let's give another render. So now we can see we have some nice definition and uh, brightness. So the last thing we want to do is we want to go create a camera. So we want to go and give it a nice angle. So I'm going to go to the coordinates. I'm going to set the H duration to minus 40 and P to minus 20. And I'm going to set the Y over here to 800. The X, I'm going to try to zero that out. Okay, zero doesn't work. So we're going to move it here. And I'm going to set the Z to minus 2000. And I think we'll go just bring down the Y. And we're going to zoom in a little bit. Thing go to the P, uh, the H rotation. I think I'm going to set that to minus 30 and move it here and move a little back. Okay, and 
and uh, then we can go to the save option and choose depth 16 bit we can set this to png sequence and if we want we can uh, add a little bit of uh, reflection to this but uh, i don't think there's a necessity to do that so i'm just going to render this out and uh, if you want you can use the physical renderer and uh, Set this to medium and choose motion blur. And if you make a quick preview, you can uh, see the render that looks like this. And we can get some motion blur when we animate the whole thing. So this is how we create uh, an infinity low poly infinity road in the Cinema 4D. I know it's been a pretty long tutorial, and I made a lot of mistakes. And I was explaining it to you guys, so please pardon me for that. And I hope to see you in other future tutorials. Uh, thank you very much for spending your time and watching this. And um, till then, take care, bye-bye, and uh, see you again.